Greetings, Internet. This is BJ Black, and welcome to part two of my walkthrough of Moments Quest Paradox RPG Chapter 3. We've talked with the Joshin, and now we'll have a look around the Joshin Castle. First, easily accessible, we have Tamamo. I've made it so that you, what you see and hear will reach me. From now on, I'll be watching over you. However, going to another world expends a huge amount of magic power. Even when I do, I can only maintain the projection for five minutes at most. For that reason, consider my existence as a final trump card. Even if you call for my aid, I won't easily respond. Hey, I'd call on you frivolously just to annoy you, bitch. We'll take that to heart. To the best of our ability, we plan to somehow make it under our own power. No, oh, how reliable you are. I can't call it a farewell gift, but I'll bestow upon you these legendary armors from Yamatai. Genji armor, Genji helmet, Genji shield. You may take this metallic raw material as well. Without someone to forge it, it will rot in your treasury, though. One meteoric iron. So that was mentioned in Puppy's blacksmithing quest line. We'll see later if that side plot moves now or further down the line. I'll give you this too while I'm helping. You didn't have anything like this in your world, right? Okay, one HP gem, one strength gem, one magic gem. It seems like a jewel with magic infused in it. For what is it used? That is a gem. It's a technology that's widespread in hell. For details, you may ask that cat bot. I'll explain. Come talk afterward. Oh, I didn't see you there. Also, not gonna bother with you. You have zero plot relevance. So, is there anything you want to ask me? I'll answer as far as is possible. Very well, let's go in order. About the Destroyer of Worlds. About the Destroyer of Worlds. It is as the Joshin discussed. There are very few things we understand about it. Said to be necessary for the Destroyer's Awakening are the eight power lines. And we still don't know what those are. The eight elements of flame, ice, lightning, wind, earth, water, holy, and dark. Couldn't those be the eight power lines? Is the mainstream opinion. But we don't know what you need to do with those eight power elements. If it was simply being able to use them, I too can use each of the elements. Yeah, wouldn't want you as a shore of worlds. Not that we know Luca will be better than you by the end of this route. If it's about the power of spirits, then you've already got the powers of flame, wind, earth, and water. Yep, Luca is not halfway there, that's for sure. But, what would spirits of ice and lightning be? No such thing as this in this world. Further, since you draw on the bloodline of angels, you understand the holy element. But as long as you aren't a Yoma, you can't use darkness as power. So the Joshin made me a hero of darkness for what? Ah, whatever. For that reason, it's theoretically impossible for you to house the powers of the eight elements. In which case, the eight power lines must be something else. There are too many things we don't know about the Destroyer of Worlds. Just that he is the one who will draw the curtain closed on this second holy war. Exciting. Or ominous. So, just speculation about the eight elements. Well, better than nothing. Next, 
about the Holy Lands, Longinus. Longinus. It's unexpected that Eden would be wielding that abhorrent weapon. Do we know anything about the Longinus in this world? As you know, we destroyed the forces of the goddess. In every land, violent black battles unfolded, washing blood away with blood. But there wasn't one battlefield where Longinus was brought out. To the end, it remained unused in the goddess's vaults. Afterwards, the Joshin discovered Longinus and destroyed it completely. Its power was excessively strong and it was too dangerous. I think that the goddess, too, found Longinus's power unmanageable in the end. She may have thought that if she gave it to an underling, there was a chance of rebellion. Would that spear have an effect on even Alias? For a god, it wouldn't destroy her, but great damage would be unavoidable. If anything other than a god were to take it, it's instant obliteration. Obliteration for anything other than a god. Even, for instance, the six ancestors? Even we six ancestors are no exception. If we took a direct hit, there's no mistake that we would be wiped from existence. But, we're the six ancestors. We're not such fools as to take a direct hit from that kind of weapon. And Elias would be? Well, she's a fool in her own right. In the end, since it's a thrown weapon, there are many ways to avoid it. As long as we were not caught completely off guard, there's no way we would take it. Even so, you had an unmistakable need for caution. We need to be careful of Longinus while Eden bears it. Okay, next. About the other six ancestors. The six ancestors besides myself, huh? Since we'll be fighting a lot together henceforth, it is best that you know about the others. First off, there's Saja. She spouts that she's the strongest of the six ancestors, but ultimately, that is self-proclaimed. At least in magic technique, I am first among the six ancestors. My magic power surpasses that of Saja. So, we talk about Saja, you immediately talk about yourself. Either you're a narcissist or you've got an inferiority complex about Saja. Maybe both. Well, it is true that Saja exceeds me combined across all powers. In strength, intellect, magic, and vitality, I'll concede that she reaches a high level. But not once in memory have I lost in magic power. The spells I know exceed 10,000 in number. I stand above Saja. Again, talking about yourself. But you're not going to point out you're kind of admitting she's smarter than you. Says her intellect's high, but doesn't claim that yours is higher. <clears throat> Why are you bragging? Wasn't this about Saja? Yeah, call her out, Alice. Well, among the six ancestors, she is one you can converse with. While you're in this hall, go have a talk with her. Next is Minagi, ancestor of the succubi, called the Great Whore of Babylon. Her erotic technique is unparalleled except by gods. So Great Whore of Babylon kind of employs that Babylon exists, or existed, in this world. How about we go without that historical tangent? She makes a principle of keeping herself disciplined, strict and straight-laced. She might give a very different impression than the succubi that you guys know. So, aside from myself, the six ancestors that you can actually speak with are only Saja and Minagi. The remaining three are unspeakable failures. 
Cannon is the ancestor of the plant monsters. Her personality is extremely cruel and single-mindedly pleasure-seeking. Her ambition is strong and she gets aggressive even with the other six ancestors. She gets into territorial fights with Kanade incessantly. Speaking of Kanade, she's the ancestor of every slime monster. She's a colony organism comprised of countless microorganisms. She's reserved and indifferent, but she is strongly attached to her brethren. It surpasses mere affection for your compatriots. That might be an immutable characteristic of the slime types. Maybe mentally she and they are all the same species. From what I'm hearing, she might resemble El Betier. And the tentacle monster's ancestor, Hiruko. She's an abomination that takes a human form. Anyway, don't try to speak with her. I don't even recommend getting near her. She'll consume you. She... she's really that unreasonable? Just what is this, Hiroko? So, that's the story. Those are the six ancestors. We basically don't get along and are regularly quarreling. But... The six of us are unfalteringly loyal to the Jashin. Only in that are Kanon, Kanade, and Hiruko reliable at all. At times, we six ancestors do try to crush each other. But for the sake of the Jashin, each of us would gladly lay down our lives. That's who we are. Well, we have a preliminary understanding. We'll be meeting the others face to face as we proceed. We're done with Tamamo then. Thanks, Tamamo. You are easily my second favorite, Tamamo. We have no questions. Is that so? Then be on our way. I'll be praying for your victory. Kaden. This girl says something interesting. Moderately interesting in calling the Second Holy War also called the Apocrypha. But I don't think that's going to come up all too often. Saja is important, though. This is our first time meeting in the flesh. I am Saja, strongest of the six ancestors. Hmm. Strongest of the six ancestors. Stop your posturing. Well, she's making good use of her ability to hear what we hear. And by good muse, I mean misuse. Damned fox interrupting from afar. I'm sorry, that fox sees me as a rival. She really doesn't like that I'm the strongest and celebrated as such. Jealousy must roil in one of those nine tails. Well, be that as it may, to you who proceed into heaven, I confer these. Windspear, Sylph, Water Katana, Undine, Flame Fist, Salamander, Earth Axe, Gnome. Hey, we've got characters with those names. This is Lady Saja. We thank you for your courteous support. Oh, you are Alice Fees the 16th. The Mao of the Singularity World and of my direct descendant. Is the indirect descendants a thing around here? In the Singularity World's history, if there is one surprise in it, it's that that ill-natured fox handles the education of the Maos down the generations. If you were raised by her, you'd become a treacherous and ill-natured Machiavellian. But by the look of you, I can see that you've got great potential. Your Tamamo too does some splendid work. Let us fight together, Otherworld Mao. It is an honor to receive praises from the great Second Mao. I swear to exhaust all my power in fighting to the bitter end with you. I still have not acquired the technique for teleporting into other dimensions, 
but I'm picking up the knack of it. It won't be long. The day is not far where I can help you directly. Until that time, do tolerate Talamo's abusive nagging. Hmph, whom are you calling abusive? In addition to Tamamo, Saja will be able to perform time-limited teleportation to at parallel worlds. Even if it's only for a short time, if Saja can come, it will be a great help. So next up, this girl. She's not important herself, but she says something interesting. First, this is in Athena. Athena. This is the innermost sanctum of the Jashin Castle. Those standing by here are the foremost warriors of hell. By the way, about the job change items for the sealed jobs. Each of the six ancestors has control of one of them. If, perchance, you got in their good graces, they might allow you to borrow those job change items. There is the one that we received from the Jashin. Aside from it, there are at least six more. If we can acquire those, it will augment our fighting power. It's a good plan to get along with the six ancestors as well as we can. It's said that each of the six ancestors visits this floor. As our adventure progresses, it seems good to return and talk to them. Yeah, what's that mean? Side quests. Next up, Canon. Hanging out in the Joshing Castle, who knows why. Hey, so you're the destroyer of worlds. And his companions. By the look of you, you aren't that strong. Can you really destroy worlds? I don't have that power right now. Although they're calling me the destroyer of worlds, I don't really get it. Hmm... You haven't awoken yet. Or you're just faulty. Ah well, if you're faulty then I'll claim you. I could make an exhibition of you, or just eat you up. Alice is not amused with this BS. By the way, you lot, you'll be riding into heaven soon, right? I've got a little favor to ask, would you hear me out? Uh, no? I'm the ancestor of all plant monsters, so of course, I know everything about the plants of this world. So, I'm interested in the plants of heaven. If you find any unusual unpla plants in heaven, would you bring them to me? If I take in that plant's tissue, I could gain new powers. Of course, I'll give you lot of reward too. So then, do your best. Try not to go and die in heaven. We got a request from Canon of the Six Ancestors. If we find an unusual flower in heaven, let's bring it to her. Now here we got a shop, with a little to stay. This is a machina smith. In hell, our mechanical engineering is more advanced than in your world. Indeed, that seems to be true. They've got strange robots like you guys around here, after all. By Tamamo Sama's orders, we'll help you. Come on, let's get to work. So it's a synthesis shop. Not that we can do anything right now, because we have no chaos trones. This prototype alloy, alloy plate sounds interesting, though. Anyway. Right now, we've got few goods for sale, but if we can absorb mechanical engineering from heaven, we can develop new products. If you can integrate heaven's technology, your lineup of goods will increase. Understood. We'll send you data if we have the opportunity. And that's the plot. What kind of plot? Finally, there's this girl. Actually, she's got no plot importance at all. She displays a lot of new game mechanics introduced in Part 3. But, not being plot, I'll leave her for a side episode where we explain game mechanics. 
and this Giga Slime here has a problem with her head in the it's behind the background. I just find that interesting. But that's it for the Joshian Castle for now. I'll spare you the time and inform you that no new quests have actually appeared in the Maul Castle, even for Puppy, when we got the Meteoric Ore. So this is where I'll end the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.